Please help support the channel by visiting our Amazon store, affiliate link below. Speaking of no, 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 no. Star Wars fans, your worst nightmare happened today. I'm sorry. Your worst nightmare happened. This could be me being hyperbolic. This could be me being a little bit pedantic, but uh, the, I would argue probably one of the worst things that could happen to Star Wars fans happened today. And that, of course, is, oh, Kathleen Kennedy signed on for three more years. <laughs> they signed in for three more years at Lucasfilm. She extended her deal. She, I knew it was going to happen. Something was going to happen at the end of September because we're coming into the final quarter of the year. There was going to probably be a shakeup, but she extended her deal three more years. And I can, I can hear the collective no from fans out there. This is, this is not good, folks. This is not good at all. Uh, it says here that Kathleen Kennedy has reignited her lightsaber. The lead producer and architect of Star Wars franchise has renewed her contract to remain president of Lucasfilm for another three years through 2021. Uh, the move is a vote of confidence in Kennedy, who took command of Lucasfilm after Disney's $4 billion acquisition from Lucas in 2012 and has overseen the relaunch of Star Wars, one of the most revered movie properties in cinematic history. Disney's four new Star Wars films have grossed nearly $4.5 billion at the worldwide box office. Ancillary and merchandising have brought in billions more to the studio's coffers okay but yeah yeah that's true um but as we've learned toy sales and merch sales are down across the board uh hasbro has come out or mattel one of the two came out and basically said like yeah with the last jedi toys they didn't sell very well when toys r us was closing down you could find tons of the force awakens and tons of last jedi and rogue one toys still available and merch sales are down i mean it's just you know they're trying to this is such this this hollywood reporter article uh by alberto e rodriguez oh no that's guy took a picture not the guy who wrote the article um he you, you whoever wrote this article at this point is basically just like it's they're just they're just completely jizzing all over it like oh my god oh my god oh, oh my god no it's what come on man come on if solo crashed and burned and it wasn't its own fault the movie was good it was the last jedi anyway uh, but it always hasn't been easy money Kennedy has had to replace directors on two Star Wars movies that were either in production or post. Uh, Chris Lord and Phil Miller were fired from Solo uh, less than a year before the film's release. Kennedy also effectively replaced Rogue One Star Wars story director Gareth uh, Edwards with Helmer Tony Gilroy, though Edwards kept his directing credit. And last year, Colin Trevorrow, Trevor, Trevorrow, I keep, I guess, mispronouncing that, uh, who was to have directed uh, Star Wars Episode Nine, was fired and replaced with the series producer uh, in episode seven, Helmer, JJ Abrams, a week later, uh, if I recall correctly, wasn't, uh, wasn't Trevorrow. He wasn't really fired. It was like, well, I mean, creative differences, but you can, but this particular article is so, so shining a good light on Kennedy. It is just, it's just beaming her with like, oh, Kennedy has done nothing wrong. She's been perfect the entire time. A lovely angel running Lucasfilm, doing nothing wrong with that. Four and a half billion worldwide off of four films, which again, is not a bad thing at all, but they're basically sugarcoating that the buck stops with her and that the problems that have been found not even to mention the last jedi not even a mention of the fan backlash of the of, of the last jedi not even a mention of of solo crashing and burning not to mention of any of that because they are trying to whitewash her crimes they are they're trying to whitewash her damn crimes now <clears throat> Kennedy's position is one of the most visible, her actions the most scrutinized. Okay, well, I guess maybe now they're covering it. Hollywood, um, in Hollywood, due to immense popularity of Lucasfilm's franchises, which also includes Indiana Jones. So it's notable that a renewal follows this summer's solo A Star Wars Story, the first big screen box office disappointment for the franchise, grossing only $392 million. Uh, with leading analysts to estimate a loss of the film at $50 million to $80 million or more. Uh, in contrast, uh, The Last Jedi, which grossed $1 billion. Uh, Kennedy's deal also follows a uh, polarizing reaction to The Last Jedi. Again, I, I don't understand. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, well, okay. Um, they're going to cover this whole thing here with the not, Rotten Tomatoes. I don't even really want to talk about that one. But real quick, so there's, there's another another thing in here I want to cover. But the thing is, the thing with The Last Jedi that, that, that the, the, the fandom menace and, and critics of the film have to realize is that and Black Panther are the number one and two selling movies of the year. And right now, The Last Jedi is actually the number one selling film of the year. Uh, so it sold a lot on home video. It grossed $1.3 billion worldwide. That is not a small number. It's been making money on the home market, whether you like it or not. That's just the reality of where things are. And it is unfortunate. It is really damn unfortunate that, that, that they extended her deal. But the idea here between what Bob Iger did is Bob Iger took hits for her 
I took hits for her poor judgment, claiming that the buck stops with him, that he's slowing things down. And then they extended her deal three years for, for some unknown reason. I don't get it personally. I, I figured they would have brought somebody else in. The fans have demanded it. The movie going community who knows about the situation <clears throat> has utterly demanded it. And as a result of that, I would argue that it's time to just get rid of her. And people could sit there and go, but Matt, you're just being sexist. I'm not being sexist. I just feel, I feel like it's just, she's not the right person for the job. I think she's bored of Star Wars and she wants out. Now it says here, this is what I want to talk about the most because I feel this is interesting. Sources say that the near future of Star Wars lies in television with Kennedy led Lucasfilm planning on expanding the universe with new characters in that medium. The shows at this stage include live action series run by John Favreau and the animated Star Wars Clone Wars, both of which will bear on Disney's untitled streaming service, which is set to launch in the second half of 2019. Meanwhile, another animated series, Star Wars Resistance, premieres on the Disney Channel. Now, I put out a video yesterday as part of this podcast podcast uh saying i'm sold on resistance to me it looks like a lot of fun i can't wait to sit down and watch it john favreau writing and directing and show running um the uh the the star wars tv series that's going to be 10 episodes for his first season with a rumored estimated budget of about 100 million dollars which is about 10 million per episode just to give you some context on that one game of thrones operates at about a six million dollar budget per episode so and and yeah, I'm just saying they're really they're really throwing it in there. And Clone Wars is going to be a good way to continue uh, finishing the story. Uh, fans are going to really like that. And I think TV is really going to be where it's at. Telling these stories, building up these characters and creating these narratives that can then find a way into the larger film universe. If they have the chance right now, and this is true, they have the chance right now to do what I kind of commented on a while back, which was to create a Star Wars cinematic universe and have it entail not only the books, which is technically part of the canon, which I still intend on doing that channel where I talk about those, um, but also having it being where you've got uh, the, the storyline taking place in the TV show and then the movies also are going to tie into that very similar to Marvel with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and even uh, Agent Carter and in some respects the the, the Marvel Netflix series and Hulu and, uh, and Cloak and Dagger, which I haven't seen yet. Um, but the point I'm trying to get to here with that essentially is that they have the opportunity to really expand out this franchise in a way that is going to be interesting, that is going to be fascinating, that is going to be fun. And I feel like that is going to probably be the the best course of action for Star Wars if, if, that or they create and this is what I would love to see personally um, is the D.B. Weiss and David Benioff that are crafting a, a series of films um, you know we're talking not a trilogy but a series I would estimate five that's my guess and they're going to create an arc and I think that arc is going to be played out in the, the in the theaters with this movies and also continued on the small screen it's a perfect way to blend the two together and then to still have ancillary stories or other parts of the canon told from the books and the comics therefore creating that massive multimedia event that they want to have and if they're going back and they're kind of resetting the clock after episode nine and moving forward in that particular fashion that could actually be a good thing now i know resistance goes back and it takes place during uh the the the, the year or whatever leading into the force awakens to give us more backstory on the first order and poe dameron and and hopefully uh captain phasma is going to get a lot more backstory um that will then really kind of elevate her character a bit because she was wasted in the two movies um but uh and then whatever favreau is doing takes place about eight years after the events of the uh, of return of the jedi so there's going to be stuff there to play with but i mean for where they're going to go next they have they have a blank slate after episode nine essentially, to get away from the Skywalker saga, to get away from all this stuff. And I think ultimately they're going to do that. And I think they're going to do that. Uh, and they should do that by by blending the two together, the theater and the and the TV. Uh, and if Kennedy can 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 be a good business person and, and, and that, learn from her mistakes and get the right people in there, then this deal will have worked. But ultimately, Bob Iger took the hits for her. And then they extended out her deal as to, I think, not be deemed as sexist. To be honest with you, look, that could get me in some trouble. People might say that. But in the Me Too era and her actually being a, a, a part of the Time's Up movement, like on the board of the Time's Up movement, it feels like the extension comes more like a, like kind of like a, a, a deal to be made versus the right move for the company. But maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. And that's not the case at all. And I hope that I'm wrong. I do hope that I'm wrong. But again, given everything else we know, I just kind of feel like, hmm. I don't know. I, I, I just, I want Star Wars to be great again. I don't think Kennedy's the right choice, but we'll have to wait and see. And if, if it lies in television, then let's go do it. Let's, let's do it and let's make it right. 
Hey, thanks for checking out this clip from Three Buck Theater. If you want to get the full audio version of the episode, you can find it anywhere podcasts are found. If you want to watch the video version of it, head on over to patreon.com forward slash mundane Matt and take a look at our Three Buck Theater perk, which gets you access to the full show that airs Monday through Friday. It's a video version of it. You get to look at this face, talk about movies and, and everything else on the screen. Uh, it's great stuff. It helps out. And I really appreciate the support. Remember to please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.